We're continuing on in the Father series, and today's lesson or series is called Friend. I read an article about this conflict in calling God our friend when he's also our king. And can he be both, or is that not the way it's supposed to be? We're also his children, and can children truly be friends with their father? In parenting classes, we're often told that we can't be friends with our children because we have to discipline and be the parent so friendship is not possible. And we know that God is more than just a chum or a buddy or a pal, but if he's only just king, then we neglect the aspect of his companionship. But true mystery perhaps, the true mystery perhaps is that he calls us his closest friend while instructing us to follow and obey. Christ went about demonstrating the character of his father and he was indeed a friend. In fact, a friend to sinners. He drew near to them in suffering and visited with them at their tables. So yes, our Father God is our friend. He also knows our deepest desires and thoughts, and He still loves us. That's the mark of friendship. He also invites us to come to Him when we're weary and to share our burdens with Him and invites us to walk alongside Him. Yet at the same time, He's our shepherd who guides, leads, and protects. Exodus 33 says, God spoke to Moses face to face as a friend, and look what He told him as a friend, the Ten Commandments for life. James 2.23 says Abraham was called God's friend because of righteousness. And John 15 says God wants us to view ourselves as dear friends close to his heart. So the problem we have is that we have this set of friendship guidelines among our friends here on earth and our own outline of what a friend should be and look like and act like. And often it's what we want from the friendship, kindness, thoughtfulness, trustworthiness, steadfast and more. And every single friendship here on earth fails and falls short on at least one of those points. And this causes great disappointment. So if we transfer those experiences over to our relationship with God, it might be hard to think of him as a trustworthy friend. And us being a friend to God, well, we are about as fickle a friend as they come, right? We believe him and we want to hang out with him when he's good and all is well, but we push him aside and we draw away instead of near when understanding is lacking and our world makes no sense. So we have this relationship with God, the creator of the universe, our Father. We're servants of the Most High, sons and daughters, and friends. I would say that my husband is also my friend, but we both fall short in being the best of friends because sometimes we think the worst of each other. My children are my flesh and blood, but I like to think of them as friends too. But they have their lives and I have mine, which is how it should be. But I still think of them as my best friends. And there's this hierarchy in our society because of economic status. And it's absolutely beautiful when a master of a house is best friends with the lowest of the staff because of honesty, trustworthiness, vulnerability, and love. But all of those fail and flounder because we're human. But that's the beauty of having the divine as our best friend. He's both God and master, ruler and keeper of the house, but he finds us trustworthy in offering us the gift of lifetime to cherish and hold, that of his son as our savior. He's our father, as we have talked about, one that is merciful. He knows all things and his character causes us to stand in awe and worship. But in those times of awe and worship, he invites us in as the closest of friends to share his heart with us so that we can then share that heart with the world. He entrusts his riches into our hands to steward them as his children and as friends, taking his inheritance and distributing it wisely and freely. It's hard to have a circle of close friends and that circle when it's broken often happens over our lifespan. That's why it's of utmost importance that he is the friend and the link that keeps our circle close. And when friends exit our circle, when we move and leave friends behind, or when friends betray us in the worst of ways, there he stands in the center to comfort and be our rock on which we can stand as we reach out to him as friend and place our trust in his unfailing love. So in conclusion, prayer is that conversation with a friend of all friends that is the most satisfying and beautiful time of intimacy with a friend that we can ever have. He hears, he listens, he takes our hearts, takes our request to heart, enjoys every praise, and then he shares right back with us his heart to us, his kingdom, stuff like power and glory that fills and transcends any intimate friendship that we could ever have here on earth. 
Yes, he's king, he's Lord, he's father, he's savior, he's amazing, he's good and kind, but he doesn't drive off in a gold coach and wave a few fingers at his subjects when he's crowned with honor and praise. He invites us in to ride with him, to serve alongside him, and to eat at his table always. What a friend God is to the lowliest of the lowly and counts them as worthy of his very presence and grace, our Father.